Hello everyone, this is Lily the Deck Harlot. Welcome back to my channel. And today I thought I'd do a tag that I saw last summer. I know it's been a while, but I wasn't recording then. But I did notice that tag that I thought would be fun if I ever came around to doing videos. And so here I so here we are. And the tag is called Do I Have a Deck? And it was introduced by Steph at Journal d'une Femme Moderne et Spirituelle. And I'll link her uh, video below if you want to have a look. So I thought it was, I thought I'd give it a try at this time. So let's go ahead. And the first question is, do I have a deck? Do I have a two-color deck? Yes. And it's the Heart and Hand Tarot, which is a black and white deck. And... Uh, this is a deck that we don't see too often, but it seems that if anyone's going to talk about a black and white deck, this is one of the cards that they have. And it's all hand-drawn. So, okay, do I have, maybe I should turn it around and see. So. There you go. So this is my two-color deck. The second question is, do I have a multicultural deck? I don't have a lot, but this one came recently into my collection, and it was a trade, and it's called the World Spirit Tarot. And it does show people of different ethnicity and different backgrounds as well as, uh, you know, uh, people of color. And depending on the card, it's got different, like diff different localities as well. So uh, I can't say I've used that, this deck very much, but um, like I said, I just received it not too long ago, so. There's the impress. So, this is a sample of World Spirit Deck. Number three is Do I have a deck created by other artists? And that is one of the questions where no, I do not. And the ones that came into my collection. Uh, for some reason, I just didn't like it. I find that very often when they use, especially if it's one card, one artist, the uh, there's not a lot of cohesion. There's not a lot of coordination. And uh, anyway, the ones I finally ended up with in my collection, uh, I didn't like at all. And I passed them along pretty quickly. Number four is, do I have a deck without a keyword, without a number, without a symbol. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here because it is, I do have a deck, but it is not a tarot deck. It's a game, it's a card game that I use as an oracle and it's the, the Dixit game. And these are just a series of images that, you know, I find they're great at practicing with your intuition. Um, you find meaning in the cards. There's no guidebook, so you come up with your own meanings. And it's just an all-around fun deck, I think. So you have a lot of quirky images and, you know, stuff that, well, you know, they stretch your imagination. You know, like, like this one here. So, so this is the Dixit game, everyone. Number five, do I have a deck with different shades of blue on the box? I actually have two. And the first one is called The Lucky Lenormand by Monica Burdinsky. As you can see, there's different shades of blue. And it's her one of her Lenormand games. And she's got a distinct, distinctive art style in this deck that I find appealing. 
So and I think this was a limited edition because it's actually numbered. And the second deck is a deck from Hay House and it's called the Energy Oracle Cards. And I think actually that's the only card in the deck that has a lot of that blue. But, you know, it's standard Hay House cards with, you know, an image and a keyword. And there's a guidebook. So, actually, so here's the backs. And uh, so that's number two. Question number six. Do I have a children's deck? I actually pulled out two decks that I'm not sure I would call them children's deck, but they are decks that you could actually sit down with young kids and read cards or play with because the even though they use it they are you know right away uh, smith clones the images aren't so stark or adult like that you can sit you know that you can uh, relate or that the kids can relate to or that you can discuss with a child what the meaning of the card was and the first one is called the tarot of trees and it's a deck i got on etsy and it's basically the Rider Waite Smith ideas and meanings uh, translated to trees. So, and I pulled some of the bad cards to show that they're not so bad. You know, not all of them, but, um, you know, here's the tree, the three of swords. Did I show the back on these? I'm not sure if I showed the back. But I love this Wheel of Fortune. Showing the seasons. Here's a death card. So, you know, see, this is not the kind of Im image that even a child couldn't relate to in some sense. Or, you know, couldn't understand. So, the second one is the Delos Tarot. And I have the second edition here. And this is a right away clone that the uh, the author basically redesigned in a and the images are childlike. So and I mean it's you know it's it's copied directly from the right away. But you know, again, it's, you know, you, 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 I see these images and I think children. So I think it's super cute. And, you know, it's, it's not as scary as the traditional Rider weight, I find. You know, even the judgment card. And here's the last one, the Ten of Swords. Actually, let me show. And here's Death, which is a little bit different. So that's the Dallas Tarot. <coughs> Excuse me. Number eight. Do I have a deck about only the physical body? I do, but I'm going to cheat on this one as well. Uh, because it's not a tarot deck. It's not meant as a tarot deck or even an oracle deck. And it's the energy medicine cards. And let me see. What did I do? And these are just a, they're a series of cards with pictures. Where this book, Energy Medicine by Donna Eden, is the basis for the cards. Because it's basically the cards showing you the techniques that you would use on yourself depending on on what you need and so basically this is what the card looks like so this one is yeah pressing your neurovascular so you have the picture with the steps and on the other side on the back you'll have the benefits and why why you would use this and 
No. There's the crust crawl. The Wayne Cook posture. The zip up. And some people, I haven't tried it myself, but some people actually do use this as a card of the day. So in the morning, they'll pull a card because depending on the situation too, some, you know, they'll, they'll actually say, oh, today will be a zip up day. Um, because these, although they are physical, sometimes they do have psychological benefits as well. So, you know, um, it's basically a wake up call in the morning to say, well, you know, you, you might be in a situation where you'll need, you know, where your brain's going to be scrambled and you'll need to unscramble your brain with the wing cook posture. So that's number nine. Uh, sorry, number 10. So what am I saying? Number eight. Number nine is, do I have a deck that is no longer printed and hard to find? I do. And the one in my collection is the Aura Soma deck. And it's the one with the bottle backs. So, so there's the, the image on the front. And then you have the corresponding bottle. So, and they're all different. So, there's the High Priestess. There's the color. hang mat. Somehow I'm all showing you bottles that are blue. Is there, oh well, there's a pink one. Strength. And this one is different. So, so there's my Aura Soma deck. And number 10. Do I have a deck with only food on the card? Yes. Or let me just say, actually, because I've been, it seems that I've been on a diet for the last 20 years. Uh, I'm reluctant to bring images in my home with food on it that pictures food. You know, that could be calendars. And I include that with, uh, with tarot cards because, you know, there's enough temptation for me to eat things I shouldn't without actually you know, putting a card in my face with a cake on it. So I think the only <laughs> exception might be the housewife tarot because it's got a chocolate cake as the devil. But uh, but the deck I do have that I would consider food is the Herb Crafters tarot. So um, although I don't think all the, the herbs portrayed uh, are edible, a lot of them are. You know, like there's dandelion, you know, sunflower, uh, rose, you know, like depending on, you can actually eat rose petals, you know, cocoa, uh, well, garlic. So I'm not sure if this is a deck. There you go. Kitchen garden. Not sure if it's a deck that I'm going to keep in my collection, but for now, uh, that's the one deck that represents food. So there you have it. This concludes the VR2 staff called Do I Have a Deck? And I'll say good day for now. Until next time.